Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Lively Weekends. My name is Dina. And my name is Alicia. And today we will be talking about BTS. BTS are known as Bulletproof Boy Scouts or the Bangtan Boys. And they are the biggest K-pop group of our time. And they debuted back in 2013 of June by Big Hit Entertainment. Uh, BTS consists of seven members, RM, Jin, Suga, J-Hope, Jimin, V, and Jungkook. And they are obviously global K-pop leaders and record breakers, but it was not always like this. Um, so back in June 2013, um, this day was when they first debuted and performed their title track from the album to Pooh for School, No More Dream. And they debuted from a small entertainment label. They didn't receive much attention from the public and the press. But I really liked No More Dream personally. It was a really good song. It was pretty good. It was one of their... In 2014, they released their song Boy in Love, which was one of the most famous songs in South Korea, and it was, was their start of their recognition. It was actually a really cool song. Like, um, it was very energetic, and it had a really catchy beat. And apparently, it was that's pretty relatable for TL. Yeah. And it debuted at like number three on the Billboard album charts. I'm not sure about that, but I think that happened. They didn't know of that, but like, it was pretty awesome. And then back in 2015, they made the comeback with I Need You. It was a very emotional song, and it helped them make their first big win on the Program. And I Need You wasn't only famous in South Korea, but it was one of the songs that got them the recognition they needed in different countries, including the US. Yeah. And and same year, their slowly growing fan base known as the BTS Army helped them reach their second million streaming charts, which was again a huge win by BTS. And then in 2015, later they released. Dope, which was again a very famous song and it became popular in not just Korea but in other countries as well. The same year they released Fire which was one of the best songs with the best music video and the graphics just got themselves were so good. It was really catchy and I personally, my brother, was really interested in that song. But before Fire, they had released a very emotional song from their album, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, Part 2, which is Run. And it was mostly about their running from their fears and their regrets in life, and it really helped young teenagers, you know, really see and face many things, you know, what they face, they could relate to it. So that helped them reach number one on the Melon Charts in South Korea, too and again gaining more popularity in the U.S. In 2017, they released Spring Day, which was one of the best songs which talk about um, friendships and how you go through different stages. And um, it's just, it was just so emotional. It was really and it was, It's one of the best songs and every time I listen to it, I Some of our I friends, cry. they really loved that song. I mean, it's super emotional for them. But before that, in 2017, in 2016, they released their Wings album, their title track, Blood, Sweat and Tears. It was their first big win when they took, took home the first Dasang Award, which is an award in South Korea, obviously. And they Have you watched the music video of Blood, Sweat and Tears? It is, it is so good. It is really graphics. good. It's amazing. I mean, all yeah, the video, music videos are amazing, but Blood, Sweat and Tears really you know, jumped and it was really up at their height and their fan rates at that time grew so much. It had never grown that much prior to that any time. And then in May 2017, they released DNA, which is um, one of their most famous songs in the US. And it was, was the one that took them into the Billboard yes. Hot 100 charts. That was their first ever dive in the Billboard chart 200 and 100 at number 67. They were invited to the Billboard Awards and won their first ever social artist award. I saw that um, award ceremony. It was it was epic. And during this time, they also had tours and concerts in the U.S. and 
Let me tell you, the stadiums were filled. <laughs> they were filled and it was really overwhelming for them as well because Love Yourself uh, her was truly a touching album for me. I, Which was, basically conveyed the message to not think about people and what they think about you and love yourself and speak yourself only. Exactly, which was one of the first out of three albums which they did of this um, series. And at that time of the award ceremony, like the artists were all like gathered around. They didn't know who they were, but they were applauding for them because they did such a big win and it was huge because BTS inspired, inspired you know all of them and they were inspired by them and watching all those artists applaud for them was huge for and them. right after DNA which is when a famous um, a western artist started to become their fans and started to talk about them more which is how they were recognized more by other fandoms and stuff which is a, a really big thing for them yeah. And then in 2018, their title track, Fake Love, from their second Love Yourself album, Tear, um, again topped the charts of Billboard 200 at number 10 on the pop cover charts. And this was again a huge success by the artists, like always. And, but it didn't really, um, this time they were really overwhelmed by all this success and but that did not stop them from working hard and continuing their music and And as their fandom grew at that time they would get more hate than ever before because people did not appreciate a South Korean group that did not speak English to be that famous worldwide. Yeah. Which was really heartbreaking for some. Exactly. But then uh, it really helped them grow strong in that time because 2018 was a really hard time for BTS. They even thought of disbanding. And when they, when they won the uh, award of Artist of the Year, they started crying. I watched that and I was so emotional after. They started crying and talking about how they were planning on um, disbanding, which, really, which is so upsetting. Yeah. And Fake Love, I think, really proves that message. It is a lovely song. It is beautiful. Then in 2019, they teamed up with Halsey, who is a very famous Western um, singer, and they released the song Boy With Love. This song was one of the best. It was their first ever like big big win in 2019 because it was a song that reached 100 million views on YouTube the fastest within a day yeah almost within a day and it was the most streamed uh, YouTube video in 24 hours which was an insane insane record for 2019 and not only did it debut number one on the Billboard 200 charts it became their third album to do in less than after a year of success of the 2018's Lovers of Tear. And right after that, after teaming up with Halsey, many other Western artists started uh, to, you know, try to get them to team up with them. They them had done so many collabs at the time. Yeah, which it is when they also released um, the song uh, Who and... Um, uh, the song? Make It Right With Love, it was such a good song. They were really great songs, absolutely. And then it also made their first uh, Korean act, you know, they were the first Korean act to you know, sell number one albums in UK, Australia, New Zealand, and in the US. And um, during this time, they were um, invited to so many uh, American talk shows. And oh, so many. although they did not, most of them, most of the members did not speak English, they had to they learn were still, language. Yes, they were still getting invited and no one would, you know, question their success. In 2019, I think by that time, a lot of um, people around the world became more accepting of the diversity that we, BTS brought and listening to their message as a lot of other celebrities, for example, John Cena, who is a huge fan of BTS, as we all know. And that was really great to see. Then in 2020, in February, they released their album, Map of the Soul 7, which is one of their most epic albums. It, it was a so many good songs. songs. It's 20 tracks, and it was, at the time of its release, one of the top selling albums in the world. It was like so many sales, I think over over something million, I'm not sure about it, 
But my favorite uh, song from it was Louder Than Bombs. I think it was really it an was emotional a beautiful song. message. It was a beautiful message. The title track is on and like overall the album was mostly about their shadows and alter egos and the outro was really then a positive outro which yes, um, the album also included Zero Fuck which is um, one of the best songs which I um, think you really like that one I do it talks about how you know we as people as teenagers we have so much trust and we the world don't know is yes, we don't know how to deal with it but we can get through it the next day, you know, life goes on and it keeps going and you cannot just stay at a point and think of it as your end and stuff, which is such a beautiful message. It is amazing. And then although during COVID times everyone was super distressed, they still kept on releasing content and sympathizing with their viewers and always wishing them well. And the armies were always ever so grateful for that because in a time like this they were really uh, distressed uh, people around the world and then BTS really did give the whole world a great gift uh, Dynamite. Dynamite, Dynamite which is They're an all English. English song and um, it was considering a South Korean uh, K-pop band that do, are not very good at English singing a full English song that, that has achieved so much that I mean positive energy. I mean, I saw interviews upon interviews upon interviews just of Dynamite because it was that one track comeback that, you know, it really brought that positivity back, you know, because in 2020 everyone was just super down and they needed someone to like lift them up. And I think Dynamite really did that. Everyone just all of a sudden became more happy and you know, smiling more so, armies around the world, and not just armies, but other people who weren't exactly always fond of BTS also, like personally. Which includes me, I was not into BTS and I did not know about them, but after Dynamite, I was just like, they are amazing. Yeah, and I remember, like, I still know people, they're like, Dynamite is really good. Like, overall, because of the positivity, like, just that song just spread. It's amazing, and if after dropping that, it broke YouTube. It had again then the most views any music video had ever had in twenty four hours. They broke records after records. One hundred and one million views in twenty four hours, and it became the first music video on the platform to surpass that in less than one day. And then it debuted number one on the Billboard Hot 100, which for was for over a month. And it was their first ever um, Billboard Hot 100 number one, and it was celebrated by them greatly. And it stayed there for two weeks, three weeks. When the members' birthdays passed, it was absolutely amazing. And um, up till now, I was uh, I saw the updated chart yesterday. It's still number eight, number seven. It does not leave. It does not leave, it does not go down by a 10, and that's, that's really cool. And of course they are the first all South Korean group to ever reach that uh, benchmark, which is again amazing. On November 20th, BTS released their latest album B, a beautiful remedy which filled uh, comfort and understanding into the hearts of those who struggled during the pandemic. It was their first ever self-produced album and it had eight tracks, eight I tracks. believe, and its title track, Life Goes On, reached again the number one of the Hot 100 charts, which was the first ever non-English song to reach that um, benchmark. And, and this, it, this it was produced easy. by the youngest member, Jungkook. Oh my god, wow. And Honestly, Life Goes On is such a good song to just listen to in the car when you go along and I honestly really loved it and some people just started crying after it was true, which was just really emotional to watch. And the album itself obviously topped the 200 
Billboard charts and making it their fifth album to do so. And my personally, my favorite song from the album was Fly to My Room. It is a very calming song. It is. I like this is the best, and it, it's such a beautiful song. It was a great song for the with the best bridge. It had a great bridge. I think it was their best bridge out of any True. of their songs. And and the bridge was made in what 30 minutes. Wow. I mean, I must applaud Jimmy for writing that. And um, that wraps it up till, for now, we hear all of their achievements in life. During this time when Dynamite released, um, and everyone knew that there no concerts were possible and armies were sad, BTS themselves were not enjoying this, yeah. they decided to do an online concert, which is, I think, the first out of all the most um, they had um they had uh, online tickets and people streamed that it was so beautiful they they put in all the effort they could even though they knew that armies were not in front of them there were like so hundred thousand plus uh tickets booked which was the most for any online concert ever booked and that was obviously an insane record and they went on with um, Map of the Soul on E, their concert for Map of the Soul 7, uh, which was also a two-day online concert. And obviously the performances from that were amazing. Beautiful. Amazing. I mean, the effort they put in E was just amazing. Yeah, like the same energy which they same would have energy. on stage. And that for some armies was so surprising. And then later, that later year, on during the year end, um, dynamite. Because of dynamite, one of the best things that has ever ever happened was that they got nominated for the Grammys, which is all oh, the yes. best thing. Uh, they really wanted. They had been invited to the Grammys in 2019, and they really hoped, uh, even in 2020, that they'd be nominated next year. And their wish came true uh, by being dominated as best, best pop group, best pop group with, with Dynamite, and that for the world was huge. It was huge for both armies and BTS. It was the best way to end this stressful and unhappy year. However, it did not end there. Like um, they had released their first ever self self produced album. album. Uh, B. These are just the achievements. There is uh, a dark side behind that. There was so much hate and wolf, which we will talk about in the next episode. Please like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel. And BTS, I hope one day you see this video. We love you. Bye. Bye bye.